it uh stopped pretty stopped faster than they thought it was gonna stop <laughs> oh happy saturday everybody um i've got my coffee here it's not 6 a.m it's 9 a.m this time so um that's good for me uh if it was 6 a.m again uh I would have missed it probably i think i slept until uh, 7 a.m this morning but here we are on a saturday uh to talk amazon answer questions hang out i don't know what else do you want to do <laughs> this is the my amazon guy uh podcast and i'm jason master mateo uh we're here like almost every uh day now doing different uh, live podcasts, answering your questions, ed ed helping the community out with uh, fighting Amazon. So uh, yeah, um, I guess uh, we'll get started. Real quick, uh, let me share my screen. Past couple months, beta TV advertisement ads have been in select accounts, but uh, this past week, looks like, for the most part, um, we're seeing uh, them in every account now. So just go and take a look at them real quick. You can go into your Create Campaign, your Advertising Console, you'll see Sponsored TV Beta here. And um, these are uh, these are TV ads for Freebie and Amazon Prime and all that good stuff. And you can see in here... Um, they are pretty picky about the quality of the, uh, videos. Uh, there's some guidelines here, but, uh, there is like a review and if they don't like the video, then they will kick it back to you. But the cool thing here is, um, they've even got the, uh, the targeting types and content interests, you know, so if you're selling your target demographic is, you know, 60 plus or something like that. Maybe you put it in uh, history, content, interests, news, eh, reality TV, maybe. I don't know. Western. <laughs> and then you've also got in market categories here, uh, which, you know, um, have different things like video games and books. And this is how the targeting works uh, for the uh customer segments i guess you see your ads can show on freebie twitch any other streaming tv services you can see these recommended bids here are pretty high um have had some success with the uh, accounts that have had access to this for the past couple months it's definitely um it's definitely something to look into if you have good video content but uh, super exciting to see uh, the new types of advertising that Amazon's been uh, bringing out here. And yeah, so let's get to the questions. Karen says, good morning, Jason. How do we upload a product videos to appear in a listing along with the product images? The back end only option to upload images is showing. Okay, well, there's two ways to do this. Funny, we were just talking about video ads there, but you're talking about the product detail page. We go here, let's go to our I think there's the uh, catalog, upload and manage videos here. And this will bring you to this little uh, dashboard here. And you can click upload video and drag your video in here. Make a title for your video. Put your brand name in there. If it's not branded, then click non-brand or click the video type. You've got unboxing, how to, troubleshooting, brand story all kinds of different stuff. Select your brand, the language of the video, and a thumbnail to uh, show on the video. And that will um, get added to your product detail page. The other way is in the image manager. You can go to catalog upload images. And you go to image manager on the top left here. And this is going to bring you to this dashboard. And you've got all of your images uh, here. So let's go to this like pumpkin thing. And you'll see the old school naming conventions of all the images, uh, which is fun. You know, PTO1, PTO2. And sometimes you'll see the swatch in here. If you're in, if you're in um, supplements, you'll often see things like uh, uh, 
uh, the ingredients uh, image and stuff like that. You've also got your video upload console here, like we just saw in the upload video, and then also 3D models and how to get your uh, 3D content uploaded for your products. So pretty cool stuff there. Two different ways. I'm sure there's another way as well, but those are the two ways uh, that are most common. Good and or good question, Karen. All right, A cap says sup, sup. <laughs> Grigor says, have you started uh, the Black Friday deals yet? Uh, uh, on some accounts, I mean, it's it's so spread out this year. I mean, they said that everything was starting on the 11th. You'll see, you're seeing some um, increased traffic on some categories, but. Uh, I mean, it, even even in the the retail stores, every year it just gets wider and wider. They had Christmas trees at Home Depot during you know uh, the beginning of October. Like it's uh, it's getting very watered down. You know, I even over uh, went to Target yesterday, and they're having like you know pre Black Friday like discounts and deals on on stuff. So. Um, so to answer your question, yeah, and and no, uh, some accounts, different strategy for potential pyramid events like this and where, uh, depending on the product, I don't like to do, or the brand, I should say, I don't like to do watered down discounts or, or anything like that. I just like to um, take advantage of the increased traffic, preserve the brand um, quality uh not cutting the price and stuff like that and um just increasing ad spend and that sort of thing josh says happy saturday jason saturday podcasts are a great idea i hope so i um, i hope it, it it catches on you know all of our podcasts are 12 noon uh during the week and a lot of people you know are working <laughs> it's the middle of the day um you know 9 a.m pacific time on a tuesday you know you're probably if you're a brand owner or whatever you're, you're dealing with brand stuff or if you have if this is a you know your 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 amazon is your side hustle you're at your real job so it's uh it's uh hopefully it sticks akip says uh what's your channel about if I may ask, I just stumbled upon it. Well, welcome. Uh, this is a channel about Amazon uh, Seller Central, tips and tricks, answer questions on strategy for selling products on Amazon, how to troubleshoot issues on Amazon, and everything above. <laughs> Josh says, Alibaba supplier sent my mass order compressed so tightly that they are not sellable. Ooh, sucks. I ordered samples and didn't have this issue. Products have completely lost their shape and can't be sold. Can I get any of my money back or at least replacement products? I just received goods and have not made the supplier aware. If supplier doesn't cooperate, will Alibaba help? <laughs> Maybe. Um, you. So, Depends on your relationship with the supplier, how legit they are. So I have 100% seen where uh, a batch of, let's say, uh, a flavored supplement or grocery product, or it's usually a supplement, um, comes in, the test uh, product or the test orders and the samples are fine. They taste good. And then the real product comes in and it tastes like crap. <laughs> And you get bad reviews and you have to relaunch a product or something like that. So um, in those cases, uh, at least what was relayed to me from the client was that the supplier said, oh, yeah, we messed up. Um, we'll remake uh, the correct you know, flavor formula and uh, replace it for you. And then I think all they had to do is repay for the shipping. But um, Work with the supplier first, and then you're going to have to see if Alibaba will step in. I have no idea what their terms of service are on on situations like this, if there's some sort of guarantee or, or anything like that. But sorry that happened to you, Josh. 
Kiz says, hey, we, we forgot to submit deals for Black Friday sales. Oh, no. Now we're seeing very low sales. How many days will the Black Friday deals last? How can we give sales a boost? Vouchers, which one? Well, I mean, it's not necessarily just because you didn't do a deal, like I said. I mean, what you can do here is, I mean, if you're in competitive niche, you can try strike through. Um, that would be my first go to. I don't really like coupons. So in order to do that, go into your manage inventory and I, you, you have to have a list price um, set for a, a good period of time. If you go into, let's go into one of these things and in your back end, you're going to see under your offer tab, you're going to see something called list price. And this is your uh, MSRP essentially. And your price, usually these are, are matched. This is your actual selling price on Amazon. And what you can do is as long as this is established, this list price has been there for a while and you've sold the product at um, the list price or what have you, um, and it's gotten sales for a little bit, you can cut this down, let's say to $12.99. And what will happen is that'll trigger a strike through. Uh, that looks like. Uh, here's one. I've been doing the frying pans. That looks like this. So strike through. And it'll say how much percentage it's you know off MSRP or the list price. Uh, if that's not working, you can do a sale price, keep your price the same as the list price, put the sale price in here, and um, make a sale start date, end date, and uh, that'll get you you know a little bit of I guess discount as well as uh, a badge. Sometimes doesn't always do it. And what that looks like is <laughs> can't find a one that says sale. They're doing all kinds of different little uh, badges. Now they're trying out. It's usually like a red badge like this, maybe a limited time deal type situation. And the third option, like you said, coupon, and that's going to be looking like this on the on the PDP. Now, different products do well with coupons. Some products do terrible with coupons. Um, the only way you're going to know is testing. I don't like coupons because it takes an extra step for the consumer sometimes. There are times, especially in the app or the coupon just automatically clicks itself so it automatically applies but makes people think and then they're doing math they're like okay how much how much is this off okay is it 45 percent off with i mean this is a big coupon wow uh, and now we're doing math and then we're going to add to cart and then we're going to be like ah no i changed my mind you know so um i and it, again this depends on how many people are in the space, what kind of products you're selling. But I'd go with the strike through. And um, how long will it last until, uh, until you know, Christmas? I mean, even after Black, the actual Black Friday, Cyber Monday, there's still going to be people shopping. Um, and yeah, so do some testing and go from there. All right, Karen says, yeah, PPC advice for relative new products with great review ratings, but in competitive niches. 50 to 200 reviews, 4.8 rating, but cost per click super high. ACOS is high. Others have a thousand reviews. So you're in a you're you're in a uh, a niche that has high cost per click. The pet supplements. <laughs> you need to go after the longer tail um, keywords if you can't if you can't play the game. Um, on the high CPC, and then also pick up the crumbs on those highly relevant high search volume keywords that are, you know, average bid $13. You can still pick up some crumbs at, uh, you know, 
two, three dollars. Sometimes you're not going to get the amount of impressions that um, you know a normal bid would, but you can sometimes pick up some crumbs there. Like I said, super high A cost. That means you're getting clicks, but people are changing their mind. They, they don't want to. Something is bothering them on the listing. Is it your main image? Type in your top keywords. Look what the competition's doing on that first picture. If yours is not um, in that space where it's uh, it's boring or whatever, you know, go to our go to our CTR, uh, my Amazon guy slash CTR. Take a look at the the options you have for main image there to see if it get some conversion there. And uh, if it's not the main image, then something's wrong with your price. That the, those are the two main issues there. Something's turning off. You're you're relevant. You're getting the the click, but they're not buying. So you got to figure out why they're not buying. Josh says, uh, "Do you usually increase or decrease price for Black Friday and Cyber Monday from the beginning of December until Christmas? Do you increase or do you decrease price and ad spend? Totally product dependent. Uh, for established products that." Um, Again, have brand, good brand presence. And we're not like in a, a pinch to, you know, push inventory, let's say like some sort of expiration date or something like that, or chocolates or you know, something that's actually seasonal. And, uh, you know, sometimes, yeah, we'll raise price, you know. Um, that extra traffic's coming in anyways. And you know, there's surprises sometimes, you know, one client yesterday went out of stock. Like we thought we had enough inventory or they thought they had enough inventory. And now we have to do, we're doing pre-orders on it. And uh, it's unfortunate because it is a gift, very giftable toy type of item that is now um, not going to get delivered until probably right before Christmas. So uh, and we increased price uh, on that multiple times. Um, you know, I think the the uh, the regular retail price was like twenty nine ninety nine, and then we got, oh no, we're, we're we're keep on selling. So thirty, uh, let's start bringing up eight percent at a time, and uh, and now the pre orders are selling at like fifty bucks or something like that. So it's definitely something that is strategy. On the other hand, there are situations like I mentioned, like if you're selling something that is very specific to Christmas or the holiday season, or uh, I said chocolates, for example, or you know, you're in grocery. Heck yeah, I'm. I need to get rid of all these chocolates. Um, and then another big, you know, uh, rush in in. February for Valentine's Day, another big rush in May for Mother's Day. And then um, I want to be out of chocolates, basically. Just a normal type of uh, amount or whatever during the regular season. And these are meltable, too. So uh, I can't have them in FBA. I need to get them out of FBA by, you know, end of May, right? Yeah, June. So uh, different strategies for, for different products. And knowing what you need to do is going to, um, you know, or what your goal is to preserve, again, or earlier I mentioned your brand notoriety, your premium, um, your premiumness, I guess. Uh, you, sometimes if you go too cheap or you do discounts, it can hurt the brand for sure. Um, it may not hurt the product, but people may go elsewhere and they go, oh, that's, that's cheap. Why, how, how come that's so cheap? You know? Um, uh, so I know a lot of people disagree with my, my discount, um, type of philosophy, <laughs> philosophy, where I always say I'm raising prices. Um, but, uh, that's just the way it is right now. It wasn't always that way. iTech says on this high traffic days that start next week and don't want to not sell anything, assuming my competitors will do some sort of promotion. Oh, sorry, there's a first part of this. If I'm low on inventory and I have to sell max three units per day until my new shipment arrives in two weeks, how should I handle advertising my price? Okay, so a perfect example here, iTech, he 
he he or she are, are, is running out of inventory. So I would be cutting the ads uh, probably completely. It sounds like you're really almost out of stock. Cut the ad spin. You, 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 you're not in the, the position to be moving units right now. Right now you're in protect and preserve uh, your BSR as best you can without going out of stock. So start raising your prices. If you raise it too high, you know, uh, if it's $29.99 and then you raise it to $39.99, it's going to get suppressed. We don't want that. But every 24 hours, 48 hours, raise it about 8%, to, um, maximum 10%, but sometimes even now 10% will trigger your price suppression. So uh, keep raising the price. You'll be surprised, um, iTech, that uh, you'll find a possible new price point for your product that uh, you know, you've been selling it at 20 bucks for, for six months and that was your price. You're happy with it. Now you're saying, Hey, people are buying this at $35 and not much is changing. And I'm actually making more profit per unit. So, uh, that's my advice for you. Standard advice on, um, preserving, uh, your BSR and going out of stock issues. All right, Rosina, what's up? Nice of you to start Saturday podcast. All right, cool. I want to contact customers who recently bought my FBA product and want to offer them a 10% off their next purchase within the next 30 days. Can I do this? How, please? I mean, Amazon doesn't want you contacting your customers, even if you had that information. Um, there's, there's plenty of ways um, that are within terms of service that you can um, do this. You know, product product inserts with a QR code that um, has a uh, a link to social media promo code for Amazon. So, you know, you have a product insert, and it says, you know, thank you for your purchase. Um, please scan the code, uh, whatever, and you put in one of these uh, social uh, media code. What's that? Create a coupon. Oh, I don't want coupons. Sorry. Let's try this again. There we go. Promotions, social media promo code. And create one of these. Get it attached to a QR code. Or you can even print the code, whatever you call it, you know, uh, on the product insert. That's one way. You do have brand tailor uh, promotions as well. Go to your advertising. Go into brand tailor promotions. And uh, you can create a tailored promotion for brand followers. So that's probably somebody that's bought something from you. Um, high spend customers, people that have bought from you. Recent customers, repeat customers, top tier customers. You can make these little promotions for them. Um, Right now, at this time, with brand tailored promotions, it uh, does not send them an email or anything. It just kind of shows up. But uh, in the future, uh, what you want to do, Amazon's saying that these are going to be able to be targeted uh, where you send them an email. And I'm not sure how customizable that's going to be. And uh, to answer here, you've got contacting customers that thought I could send them a message through Seller Central. I mean, you can, but there's a limit on what you can say here and they auto screen this stuff. You go to your messages and so here's some customer service messages and stuff, but um, you know, a lot of the stuff in here is like really um, you can't say like, Hey, I'll give you 10% off or whatever. Uh, it'll like filter it out. If you're talking about going into your orders, And let's just grab one of these things. So here's Oliver. And you want to, um, like he bought this. There's, you know, to my knowledge, you can't directly contact this guy. You used to be able to. Let's find something that's a little bit older. All right, this was a month ago. Let's try one more. So you can request a review. Not eligible. I already did it. That's why. So, I mean, those are the those are the ways, Rosina.
Mike, good to see you. My revenue this year is around 800 and 900 K. Congrats. My CPA doesn't have any experience working with Amazon sellers. Can you share with me your CPA? I will owe you. <laughs> um, funny thing, we uh, for for us, I'm pretty sure Dustin is our our VP of Finance is our CPA. <laughs> I don't think he's an actual CPA though. Uh, we do have uh, some referrals. I think. Let's go on myamazonguy.com and you can go to recommended third-party services. Let's try uh, taxes. Oh, tax. Uh, this is for VAT in Europe. That's not what you want. Well, I'm sure they do. Hello Tax does regular e-commerce taxes as well. Maybe not. Yeah, um, you know, I see these Amazon, a seller, e-com tax businesses um, at like every convention. There's always like, there's always like five to 10 of them have, that, have, that have booths, uh, you know, Prosper and Sell and Scale and every other one of these things. But um, I would look around, call around and find something that works for you. But uh, yeah, uh, this is pretty common, Mike, where you have a, a business and, and it's brick and mortar, or maybe it was just, you know, e-com, it was really easy to keep track of fees and stuff like that. And then uh, you give uh, your CPA all of your Amazon like tax information, and then there's like refunds. And if you're selling in different countries and all that stuff, and the poor tax guys like, I, I don't understand like all this stuff. So um, I wish you luck in your and your venture to find uh, a proper tax consultant. Rosina says, help me understand what is Amazon Vico? Can you give an example on how an Amazon private label seller can benefit from using Vico? So at Amazon Accelerate in Seattle, um, all they did was talk about this <laughs> and now I'm seeing advertisements for it. And where did I see? I, I swear I saw advertisement for it in the console. It was like right up here. I said like use Vico. So let's um, go to, oh, as it loads here, geez, what is going on? My internet down no something's wrong with the uh, amazon loading there we go okay let's go to apps and services and selling partner surprise it's not at top not on top but i guess that's because it's part of amazon i think or partnered with amazon there it is. So this is a shipping software. Um, think like uh, Channel Advisor, ShipStation, I think. Uh, and the funny thing is, like, they they say it's free. Vico is free. Unlimited users, orders, no monthly costs, no shipping label limits. But definitely read the um, reviews and the uh, and the small print. Not sure exactly how they're making their money, but uh, I think it's like almost like a per unit processing order or something like that. Uh, don't quote me on that. I haven't used it. Uh, there's no reason for us to use this. Um, most people are using ShipStation and Channel Advisor, those kind of things. But uh, yeah. So to answer your question, I don't know how. Uh, Oh, you can benefit. Oh, how can you benefit it from it? Just like you would with any kind of <clears throat> any kind of software that um, that helps you with omni-channel fulfillment. So it looks like on this one, they do eBay, Etsy, Shopify, or any other channel. It says which 
that would be surprising but um i'm gonna check it out it says it's free see if it works for you rosina says um got a brand tailored promotion segmented for recently bought customers will do what i wanted awesome perfect use those use those those are those are uh, coupons that are targeted people already interested in your product you know card abandoners stuff like that straight club says is there any way to remove customer reviews that has just the rating and no comments not usually no that one's real tough uh it's you know customer reviews are are one of the hardest things to remove but if you can find something in the terms of service that um it's not allowed you can uh you can have some success uh you know i've i've had reviews removed because there was a word in there that was uh translated if it was translated into korean it was a curse word uh even though that's not what the person meant but you know you can find anything that's against terms of service um you can usually get uh rev reviews removed jeff says uh morning jason love the saturday show what's up jeff good to see you man and uh we got uh jeff question okay you have a supplement that is produced in a thin box that is easily crushed you have to place the thin box in a small crush resistant cardboard box i don't want amazon to open these new boxes i plan to add a safety seal uh fnsq barcode and product name on the outside of the box any additional box info you recommend should be added to keep amazon from opening my crush resistant box man you pr i mean you've already manufactured all this stuff but i was like i'd go back and get like a bottle or something it, it, uh, get different main packaging for the product but what i used to do in this situation just to be safe and it's not necessary really if you have the amazon uh fnsq on the on the outside and you know a, a brand label it's going to be considered to get scanned in as one unit but if you're really concerned um i used to buy these stickers it's called like uh uh do not open or no no that's not the right one maybe we'll get there if i type this in um, this isn't the one i'm looking for it was it's called something like that like like part of um part of case but it's the opposite of that i'm drawing a blank right now what what it what it's called well there's you can get custom stickers too that says like uh i don't know, i can't remember i can't remember what it what it was uh what the sticker said but it, it was something like single unit or something like that um because you used to do the same thing with um if you were selling bulk and let's say it was a 20 pack and it was all packed into what would look like a case pack um you put the stickers on there it says like um not case pack single unit and then you'd have the fnsq on there so i wouldn't worry too much as long as you have the fnsq it's like selling any other product just pretend uh, just imagine if you didn't have the crushable packaging and your product was just in that cardboard box, you would put the FNSQ on there and that would be your single unit. So, yeah. All right. So, come on, people. We need some more questions here. What else is going on? Um, not really uh, a lot of... Uh, increased traffic coming in yet uh on a lot of categories so maybe uh friday and uh thursday and friday are going to be pretty pretty exciting oh i see it on this screen over here but nico put it right there there it is that's what it said yep do not separate um but that was for i don't think that will work for what jeff wants that that was for when you uh had uh, case units that were you're selling in bulk says do not separate yeah but that that is the 
the language I was looking for. Thanks, Nika. I talked with Nika yesterday. Had a good call. All right. Uh, so let's run through Brand Taylor promotions one more time. Um, since uh, we can see some new customer segments here. So I just kind of showed you Brand Taylor promotions for. Um, For uh, Rosina's question, if we go into brand analytics here and we um, see this new customer loyalty analytics, you can pick your brand and let's just go by month here, say October. And you'll see these, these customer segments here now. And you know, word on the street, what, what Amazon's doing here is we can see these customer segments here now in this customer loyalty analytics, we can see even additional ones, uh, customer segments in the brand tailored promotions. Let's go there real quick. Go to advertising, brand tailored promotions, pull these over here. You know, we've got even one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine audiences here. They're showing us four audiences here. They're showing us our, our total customer trends, our new customers, our repeat customers, all that good stuff, right? You can even, on this new and potential customers uh, thing, create a brand tailored promotion straight on this dashboard. So it's skipping us uh, saying 102,000 people have shown interest in our products but haven't bought yet. So we can create a promotion for the entire brand and brand tailored promotions here. So you see brand, Age of Sage, potential new customers, 102,000. Tells you right here, tailored promotions may combine with unrestricted promotions, deals and coupons. So there is some stacking uh, possibilities there. And um, put in our promotion name here, all Age of Sage products, again, um, they say that uh, we'll be able to do ASIN specific soon on this. You do your discount, your budget. This is the budget of the maximum of, of promotional spend. This doesn't cost us anything. It's just a promotional spend uh, we'll inc incur on the promotion. Uh, start and end date, number of redemptions per customer. Uh, this usually can't be changed. You've got some terms of service here, and then you submit the code. So, um, what they're going to do here, and again, this is just kind of rumors, but I believe what's happening here is at some point, maybe next quarter, we're going to be able to um, have some sort of templatized Amazon emails to send to these um, customer segments or audiences. And depends how they how they uh, integrate this. What, what I'm thinking is they're gonna use something, either they're gonna use the social posts or they're gonna, it's gonna be similar to like a sponsored display or, or social post type of um, situation where we can, um, we can reach out to these uh, customers, not directly like, hey, I'm Jason, you know, hi customer, but uh, to get the product in front of their eyes again. Uh, or get the brand in front of their eyes again. Uh, this will be for people that are not brand followers because they're already following our brand store and receiving our social posts. Now, this is just me spitballing how I think it's going to work. But the way this is all building out, you know, every couple of weeks we're getting either a new audience segment or, you know, this brand analytics uh, customer loyalty that just showed up, um, you know, two, three weeks ago. They're, they're, they're uh, they're gearing up for some sort of uh, granular, almost DSP-like um, targeting, be it via the ads or with these um, these customer audience segments. Kazuya says, "Jason, our ASIN was suppressed in one MP in Europe, but still active in others. They say the problem is with images." Matt with prayer images. We tried updating with flat file. 
but they still reject as if images didn't go through. We removed everything, just left image of Matt. What we can, what can we do? So your image is suppressed. Um, if if the the images just aren't showing up in in Europe, try doing it the old school way. I know you said you did flat file, but there is another way. And your catalog upload images. There's the old bulk image upload tool, and um. This is where you put your images in here. Um, sorry, you have your images. You name them ASIN dot. So for the main image, it'd be ASIN dot main, all caps. Um, <clears throat> for the second image, it'd be ASIN dot PT01. Third image, ASIN dot PT03. And um, you zip them, and then you drop the zip file in here and click submit images. Now, if your image is just not within terms of service, you need to edit it. A lot of times, a quick trick here, Kazuya, if it's just an image suppression, is drop that image in whatever photo editing software you use. Uh, I mean, Canva is really quick. And just turn the transparency, uh, excuse me, turn, turn the transparency down um, like 1% or something like that and uh, save the image and then try and do that or like shrink it like a little tiny tiny percentage see if that goes through but um sounds like maybe there's a uh graphic or something that's triggering amazon and it's only being caught in in europe right now and you need to adjust that Ollie says, how do you manage having so many different brands on one selling account? I'm getting user permission issues after five brands on my seller account. So um, I've been over this before and there's uh, there's really no, um, there's no support from Amazon for agencies or, you know, even micro agencies that are managing, you know, doing white glove and stuff like that. And um this video is out there on how how we create what what I call it is a drone account, and what you do is a uh, new email, new phone number. So, for example, at, at Mag, um, to answer part of your question, Ollie, we have um, somewhere in the tune of I think fifty um, permission logins that we use to manage our our uh, client accounts, and you know each one of those um, are drone accounts. And those are created, new email, new phone number, and you um, create a password, you know, create an account, and do the OTP. And then the next step after the OTP gets put in and you log in the uh, account, it's going to start asking you for business information and uh, your address and all that stuff. You stop right there. You don't, you don't fill any of that out because we don't. It, it's not an actual account that we're going to sell anything on. And what you do then is you take either your account or uh, for you know for us, we use the Age of Sage account and we send a permissions invite to that new email, accept it. And now you'll see um, Age of Sage in there and that drone account is not connected to anything. Uh, this does two things, uh, prevents the account from being connected to any account. So there's no, um, not any ever like screw you know, account um links or anything like that and it allows us to um have a uh, a multiple a uh, lot or what's called multiple uh, client accounts in a login so that we can properly manage and uh safely have everything secure with you know one password and all that stuff so um right around 50 invites somewhere around there that's when, for at least for us, that's when Amazon, um, like you'll go to accept the invite and it'll just like not work. Uh, it's something with Amazon's um, allowability to, I guess, uh, ca <laughs> capacity on on how many invites you can have uh, in a in a single drone account. So that's the way uh, that's the way we do it. Um, I've talked with a lot of people over the years, and you know. Um, 
at Amazon and, and all that stuff. But uh, uh, this is the way that it, it's supposed to be done uh, for, for agencies. Kazuya, okay. Ather, how to get Inspire brand section and PDP. So Amazon Inspire um, used to be their like education program. It's getting a little buzz here, but uh, it's only available. You have to do everything on the phone through the app. So you have to make an Inspire account to connect it, all that stuff, and um, go from there. So there's not a lot of information on this or tutorials or anything. Uh, it's really hard for me to do videos on this because I I guess I could figure out a way because but I have to do it on on my phone. Um, I'm sure there's some app I could download on my computer to to be able to do it there, but I don't I don't know how that works. So um, not very. Uh, it's not something that um, we're really like looking into right now. We do have some clients that are on Amazon live where they promote their own products and they're doing inspire as well but you're not you're not seeing a ton of um attraction there as far as the effort that needs to go in but that could change for sure because just says we edited the image now it doesn't have anything against tos are you sure because it's still getting flagged try something different i know you said you did but um something's flagging it otherwise uh you need to start um bugging support Nico, Jason, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, <laughs> 24 hours. Eddie, I can't see brand registry of client. My child account has given me all the permissions. Does he need to contact brand registry? You can't see brand registry of client in your child account. Okay. Um, are you sure he's given you all your permissions? Because this is usually, um, there's in user permissions, there's manage permissions button. And then there's also global permissions button. And a lot of the brand registry stuff, like brand analytics and all that good stuff, is in the global permissions. And you're going to need him to set those as well. If you can't see his brand registry, um, try a different email. That's what we do. Sometimes uh, brand registry is really screwy. You accept the invite. It goes through. And then the brand just doesn't show up on the, on the brand registry drone account. So we'll say, OK, send it to this other mag email. And then we'll see it. So. Ollie says, thank you very much. No problem, Ollie. Jeff, similar to your last question, if you're managing several brands, how do you handle multiple phone numbers for each of these client accounts? I mean, we buy the phone numbers um, it's, it's for the for for our drone accounts, essentially. So um, I think they're, I don't know, IT does that. So uh, maybe Google Voice or something like that. Nico says, hey, Jason, it's been a while. Love the Saturday show. By the way, this is the time I'm usually knee deep in listing management and updates. So it works out perfectly. <laughs> okay. You do your listing management and updates on Saturday. <laughs> Ollie says, I can accept the invites, but when they try to edit my permissions, it says to try a different email for the secondary account, but I only have five brands on my account. Yeah, make a new email. I mean, anybody can do it. So let's say um, your agency is, you know, Ollie Brands or Ollie at Ollie Brands dot com right or all yet just use gmail i mean if you don't you obviously we use my we use our domain emails but um so your five account your five child accounts are on ollie at gmail.com so make ollie cooper at gmail.com do that drone account thing so it's a new email for your amazon account new phone number go on google voice get a phone number um do the otp stop right there invite your account or um you don't even have to do that uh, that's just we do that because it's faster um have your client invite to that new account ollie cooper at gmail.com um and set permissions there there's some sort of bug here with um your invites happens all the time especially when you're managing multiple accounts that's why we have you know like i said 50 emails that we um we cycle through it gets even it gets even weirder when when you're uh when you're managing um, like UK or Europe accounts, right? So you're going to manage, uh, you're in the US and you're going to manage UK uh, account. Um, we have to, we have to tag certain accounts with um, 
a passport, which is the stupidest thing. So my passport, Stephen's passport, um, you know, I think Dustin's uh, are attached to accounts um, where we manage Europe and UK clients because it's required to get permissions from those. You uh, you need to uh, have the account's identity, which is ridiculous. But uh, we have to send that information to the client too. It's not like we upload it. When the client tries to send us permission, it says, uh, you know, Jason Master Mateo will need his, you know, uh, passport ID and all that stuff uh, and a photo. And I'm like, oh man, all right. <laughs> it's a good thing. I'll, uh, we, we keep our clients happy. So, <laughs> Ollie says, uh, Kazuya, check your main image is big. We had a similar issue previously. Yeah. Just keep uh, make make sure you're within terms of service and everything. If it's like four thousand by four thousand, try two thousand by two thousand, um, et cetera, et cetera. Nico says, "I've heard some news about Amazon linking with Facebook ads, but haven't actually seen it show up in the wild." Do you know this is ruled out yet? Use a lot of Facebook ads, so very interested. So this just got announced. Uh, same with like TikTok. Uh, last month they're they're linking back up with Shopify. Everybody's coming back to Amazon uh, to suck at the uh, the almighty Be Bezos. Um, yes, uh, they're doing something here. I, I'm not completely up to speed on what it is, but, uh, if we could get some sort of Facebook integration in the ad console on Amazon, that would be super cool, but probably more to come. Ollie says, awesome. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the help. No problem. Always happy to help Ollie. Um, so let's see, we'll do some marketing on this. Um, I like doing the Saturday, uh, I like doing this at this time, but maybe we'll try like an evening time and see if that works. We did max out at like 23 viewers. So Friday podcast is usually around 50 or 60. So not bad, obviously uh, got to answer some of your questions and all that. So for next week, um, it will be uh, Thanksgiving. And um, what will happen is there'll probably be no podcast on Saturday next week, um, but I'll fill in uh, for Faith and Tom on the Friday one. So we'll still do the Friday one. And one second here. Uh, Steven's calling me. Let's see if I can get him to pop in here. Let me see if he'll, he'll pop in real quick. We give him one second and I'll do the spiel. Uh, we are myamazonguy.com. We are a full service marketing agency, but we are much more than that. Um, right here, uh, we've got our careers. Uh, this is the big thing, you know, uh, always hiring, always uh, growing and looking for new eager, uh, you know, interns, or if you do have experience, brand managers, we've got IT jobs, PPC, design, sales, social media, all that good stuff. Do you want a uh, one-on-one coaching? We've got our lovely coaches here. Uh, Tom, Francisco, Faith, Kristen, Joe. You've got everybody's favorite here, John, and, uh, and myself as well. Did some coaching calls with uh, some of our viewers this week, actually. So that was fun. Um, always love catching up with uh, people and helping them out with unique problems. Uh, what else we got? Uh, we've got our SOPs, if you want um, to just download all of our SOPs for what we do, that's there. Or, um, obviously, it costs some money. Uh, what else do we have? Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think I got everything. Oh, courses. Yeah, there we go. Mag-school.com. You can learn uh, everything we do, SEO courses, international launching, brand registry, A-plus content, all that good stuff uh, we have here at mag-school.com. Uh, Ollie says the passport thing in Europe is a pain. Been waiting a week for a 3PL account to be verified. Yeah. Rosina says Saturday noon time is great. People just don't know about it yet. I'm in Dubai evening time, Eastern Standard Time would be hard to attend. Yeah. I know it's tough. We're such a global community that um, it's hard to find, you know, a, a, a time, a lot, a lot of times where where everybody can, uh, can uh, you know, uh, have a good, <laughs> they're not busy. They can sit down and, you know, ask questions watch the show. I appreciate everyone joining us today. Uh, we will be back on Tuesday, I think, with Matt Davis for the PPC. 
uh, Wednesday. I think uh, John will do the ARL and then Thursday, Friday, obviously here in the US, we uh, are are off for the uh, Thanksgiving holiday, but I'll do the podcast <clears throat> live Q&A on Friday at uh, noon Eastern time. So we'll have that. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend, a good holiday, and we'll see you next time.